Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren and this is Lauren's Library. Today I'm doing something a bit different. Uh, I'm doing something similar to when I read um, three of Silva, Sylvia Morena Garcia's books, but it was more like a vlog. But um, I kind of did started this one in unintentionally. It wasn't intentional, but um, the author I'm focusing on today is Kennedy Ryan. Um, so my relationship with Kennedy Ryan um, I've heard of her books, but I didn't realize the author. So the first book that I heard of from her was Before I Let Go. It was a book of the month book. I saw it on everyone's Instagram. I saw people talking about it on Twitter. But it wasn't anything that I was interested in. Um, but I didn't realize it was Kennedy Ryan. Next, I heard of um, The Kingmaker. I saw it on somebody's YouTube channel. Um, I can't remember who they were talking about wanting to read it. And then I saw it at the bookstore and I was like, oh, let me just pick it up. It sounded interesting, not realizing it was Kennedy Ryan. And lastly, I got this at the bookstore and I was like, oh, I've seen, I've heard of this book, but I didn't recognize this cover. I've seen the covers, the covers with the couples on them. It's like a illustrated couple on the book cover. Um, I was like, I've heard of this, but not realizing it was Kennedy Ryan. So all of these I had heard of, but not realizing who the author was until I got home. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> having them in separate places and then, like, connecting the dots after having each of these books in my possession. I was like, these are the same person. I had to look it up. Look it up. I was like, maybe it's somebody with the same name, two people with the same name, but no. Kennedy Ryan, um, these are three of her books, all different series, and I was shook. But um, before we're going to start, um, I wanted to, decided to make this um, Are They For Me video um, halfway through this one. This is the second one I read, and I was like, I should do a reading vlog, but I had already finished this one, but so I couldn't really do a reading vlog, so I decided that once I finish reading these three books, I'm just going to do a sit-down video and just discuss my thoughts on her books. So Before I Let Go is the first one that I read. Um, and this is a book that I'd heard of and people were saying that it was so good. Um, and um, I just wasn't interested in it because, I don't know, it was just the couple not wanting to read about a couple who had broken up. I don't know. It was just a lot that I didn't want to get into while reading it, but I decided to pick it up one day just um, randomly, and I really enjoyed it. So let me just, I feel like I'm going off on tangents, but Before I Let Go follows a couple named um, Yasmin and Josiah Wilton. <gasps> I was right. I can't believe I got that right. His name is Josiah. Yes. Um, they're, um, met, they met in college, they got married, they had two kids, they opened a restaurant up together, Josiah is like this really, um, good cook, so they open up a restaurant together, um, something happens, I don't want to spoil it, something happens where it makes their marriage and their relationship very difficult, they end up separating, and that's where the book starts. And we get all the details that I provided you all earlier, like, um, and like we get gather all of those details while reading. But um, the book picks up after it's been like two years since they separated. Um, and uh, Yasmin is in therapy. She's talking about how uh, we're working so well together um, with our restaurant and with our kids. Everything is going great. The only thing that's um, kind of shaky at the moment is her relationship with her daughter. Her daughter is a newly teenager and they are butting heads a lot. Um, but the, um, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The conflict <laughs> comes in when Josiah is, um, well, Jas Yasmin finds out that Josiah is now dating since they've broken up he started to date and the woman that he's starting to date is their head chef at their restaurant and so feelings get kind of jumbled up and tangled and it becomes very complicated and she's trying not to make it complicated um, and it's just 
it was just so beautifully told i don't want to give everything away like i was i cried i cried in every single one of these books honestly truthfully but probably in this one the most um it was just heartbreaking at moments and uplifting at moments and understandable at moments and just oh you're just like you're you feel like it, it felt literally like watching a movie and you're like yelling at the screen yelling at the book i was yelling but it was so good i gave it five stars it is one of my favorite books that i've read this year it will most definitely make my favorites of 2023 so don't be surprised when i hold this book up at, in my end of the year videos <laughs> so yeah um, I was supposed to get this book signed. Um, I'm at the Austin, um, Texas Book Festival, but her panel was the last day, um, of the festival, and it was uh, late in the afternoon, and I had to get back home, so I was unable to attend her panel and hear her discuss her book and her upcoming book. Um, there is a second book coming out to, um, this series following one of Yasmin's friends that we meet in this series. Um... I guess I can talk about it at the end because all of these all of these books that I've read for this video are um, in a series, but I'll discuss all of those at the end. But yeah, five out of five stars, so good. The next book I read um, by Kennedy Ryan is the King. Oh no, that is not the next book. The next book I read <laughs> was Long Shot, and I need to. I should have done this before I filmed to see what what was the order between these two. I know this is her most recent release, I think. <laughs> now that I say it out loud, I'm not 100% sure. But the next book I read was Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan. And this, book's follow, this book follows um, August and Iris' perspective. August is, um, we start the book in where he is a um, big college basketball player. You can't really see the book cover. Let me see, get closer, yeah because the light is very bright on it. But um, August is a college basketball player. He's, everybody knows he's gonna get drafted. He's very good. Um, and it's the night before the finals for, um, I forget what you call the college, not the NAACP. <laughs> NCAA, <laughs> that's what it's called. <laughs> And um, he's at a bar just kind of deep, trying to, he was supposed to meet up with like his childhood coach, but something happened, with, that's not important, but something happened where he was unable to meet up with him. So he's about to go back to his hotel room before the night of the game when he hears this girl um, yelling at a TV screen at the Lakers game. And that is our other main character, Iris. And instantly he feels a connection with her, but... Um, Turns out, after they have this good conversation, he tries to make a move, and she's like, I have a boyfriend. Okay, then fast forward to the day of the game. Um, I don't want to tell. I don't know. It's so hard today doing these reviews when you don't want to give everything away. But anyway, he sees Iris at this game, and it turns out that Iris, the guy that Iris is dating, is kind of um, August's childhood nemesis that they've always been rivals throughout their childhood and playing basketball into their college um, education or college experience and um, and he's like oh you knew who I was but why didn't you tell me who you knew who I was and that you were dating this guy that I do not get along with we've never liked each other and we've always gone against each other and that she's like oh I'm sorry da 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 but it's never going to happen. And so basically with all throughout this whole book, we're jumping through different uh, milestones in their, um, August's career and Iris' relationship with Caleb, I think was her boyfriend's name. I don't remember. It doesn't say on the thing, but I think his name was Caleb. That might be wrong, but I feel that feels right when I'm saying Caleb. But... Um, it seems like, oh, this is going to be, like, starting this book, I didn't know, I didn't read the back. I just picked this book up off of word of mouth, and I did not know how um, triggering this book would deep, uh, delve into, triggering um, incidences 
Um, so, so I'm just going to give you trigger warnings here. There's trigger warnings for rape, trigger warnings for domestic violence, trigger warnings for um, forced pregnancies, trigger warnings for a lot of things, uh, attempted murder, <laughs> like trigger warnings. I would go into this if those are things that you are sensitive to I would not read this book so what we learn um, from jumping to Iris's perspective is um, that, that Caleb knows that she has a connection with August although they, they haven't pursued that connection because she let August know that he she has a boyfriend and that there, there couldn't be anything while she's with him they couldn't explore that connection um but so he takes that um information or he takes that seeing their connection that at one of his basketball games because they each get drafted august gets drafted to a different team and caleb gets drafted to a different professional basketball team and at one of their games they he sees their connection and he uses that connection to um what's the word to um justify him abusing her and um, say and very harshly like very violently it's just so unbelievable like I was not expecting that when I picked up this book so please take heed to my warnings trigger warnings for all the things that I've listed and probably things that I've missed like anything any small uh any like thing that relates to that the trigger warnings that I gave I would take the take those as well just like it was so infuriating reading the abuse that abuse that iris um endured throughout this novel but and her trying her in august seeing that something is going on but not being able to get the answers that he um he believes or assumes because iris is in danger and it was just I don't, I'm trying to get emotional trying to talk to him about it, but it was so good. Um, I gave it four out of five stars. It was just, um, and the reason for the four out of five stars is the writing in the beginning of the this book was kind of clunky to me, and it was just kind of corny, like some of the lines. But I don't, it, I feel like it got, that's why I wanted to see what order she wrote these books in because it didn't, um, because then before I let go, the the conversations between characters felt so um, authentic and easygoing and just real. And, and some of the beginning of this book, some of it felt corny and kind of clunky and forced. But um, that's, a, that's why this one got four out of five stars. But I really enjoyed it, although it is very hard to read. So I just keep wanting, keep wanting to warn y'all that if this is something that you're wanting to read, Make sure that you look into it, okay? Just to be sure that it's something that um, you would want to read. All right, the um, final book that I read for this Are They For Me series or um, video for Kennedy Ryan is The Kingmaker by Kennedy Ryan. Um, this one follows uh, Maxim and uh, what was her name? I've read this one the most recently, so the fact that I don't remember her name is embarrassing but her name is Lennox. I want to say Moon but that was her middle name and I knew it was her middle name when I was trying to say Moon. But anyway this book follows Maxim and Lennox and um, Maxim is the heir or the son of um, this big conglomerate owner CEO of an oil company in America. I don't know if it's worldwide but and um, he's taking his son to a uh, um, sacred Native American Apache, um, what do you call it, Gra sacred grounds where he is about to destroy and mutilate this ground and ruin these people's water supply of this tribe um, because he wants to um, set up a pipeline there. And his son is... Um, Maxim, our main character, he is currently getting his master's or PhD, I don't remember, um, at um, Berkeley University, where he is focused on, I don't know why, <laughs> I just zoned out, where he is trying to um, learn or study about climate change 
and all these other things and he's against what his father is doing and when he gets there he sees this girl there named Lennox who is um, leading a protest against the pipeline going in um, on her sacred grounds um, she is part of the Apache tribe and she's giving a speech um, about how this is where this is sacred ground for them and it's wrong that politicians promise these grounds to them that they will be protected and that it is theirs and that there will be no interference and then they turn back and sell that land to the big the biggest bidder i.e. Um, I forget his dad's name I think it was Warren Cade um, and these oil companies in order for them to ruin their grounds their water supply um, and also what I'm going to get into more I guess um, have all these um, construction workers or these um, workers come in who I don't want to that's a generalization but it, it, it leads to um, Native American girls going missing and bodies being found of Native American girls that no one cares about or no one's talking about it was just it's just a lot and she gets very emotional and Maxim our main character's father or Warren Cade Maxim's father he doesn't care he's like move forward get these people out of the way and that's when Maxim jumps out of the car and he ends up um, rescuing Lennox from getting attacked by a Doberman dog <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that but anyway they get arrested and they're talking in the holding cell and that's when um, he realizes that she's 17 and that he's like oh everything stopped because they're flirting and everything in this holding cell and it's just a lot so then we jump forward four years later um, Lennox is traveling to Amsterdam with two of her friends for spring break it's their senior year when they run into Lennox and his friends where he is wrapping up his studies he's I think he's getting his PhD this time um, and he's wrapping it up and he's celebrating with his friends and he's about to in a week he's about to travel to Antarctica to study um, get samples and study climate change that's happening there but anyway that's when they start okay we're just gonna have this week where we're gonna get to know each other da 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 thing is uh, Lennox still does not know that Maxim I feel like this is the clunkiest <laughs> Um, summary that I gave out of all three books but anyway you'll soon find out why but anyway anyway well, Mac Lennox still does not know that Maxim is Warren Cage the big oil company giant's son that destroyed the sacred ground of her tribe so he's keeping that secret from her he knows that she doesn't know and he's choosing to keep that information to himself because he has cut his father off um, that's something I left out Really, he doesn't want anything to do with his father. He's not taking any money from his father, which is he has a trust fund from his grandparents. But isn't that I was like, isn't that still kind of your family's money? But anyway, <laughs> he's he cut his father off. He doesn't speak to his family or his parent or his father specifically. Um, he doesn't really have a problem with his mom or his brother, who is a senator in California. But anyway, um. They're spending this week together in Amsterdam, and then um, they're like, after this week, we'll never see each other again. It'll be all over, da 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 da, because we're all we're because Lennox has this opportunity, a lot of opportunities on her table, to um, and um, working for um, lobby comp lobbyist companies, or she has different opportunities she can choose from. I don't want to go into that, but anyway. Um, one of Lennox's opportunities comes knocking early and they're like oh I want to meet you um, it's something that she's really passionate about it's going to um, it's helping um, a one of a Native American representative or someone who's running to a Native American who's wanting to become a representative and being part of his campaign team and helping him get elected and so she has to fly back to the United States early um, so that's where that ends. <laughs> so this book is, I feel like this is very messy, but this book is jumping. We jump from the beginning of the book where they meet. We jump four years and then we jump 10 years. Um, so 10 years later, 
oh, four years, I'm back at the, I'm sorry, four years, um, once Maxim goes off to Antarctica, something very scary happens, and, um, he needs to be rescued, and that's when he, is, his father steps back in, although they haven't had that relationship for four years, and once he gets rescued, it's all over the news on how they were rescued in Antarctica, his group was rescued, and that's when Lennox realizes that he is the son of this man that ruined the sacred ground of her native tribe. And then she doesn't want anything to do with him. And she's like, leave me alone. And he's like, I'm not going to leave you alone. I know we're meant to be together. Da 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 da. Ten years jump in the future. Um, Maxim's brother is now running for president. And uh, Maxim, uh, what do I want to say? And uh, he hires Lennox. Winnix's company, um, where she has been labeled a kingmaker because since that first opportunity she got straight out of college, she has become kind of a known person to help people on their campaign of uh, being elected. She has a very high success rate. And so Maxim's brother hires her company to help him win the election. And that's when they come back into each other's lives and uh, Maxim is trying to become uh, mm -hmm trying to get him her to forgive him and yeah basically that's it so all in all I gave this three out of five stars um, I found this one the least I don't want to say that because there are some important topics being discussed with in this book because um, Lennox's mother went missing protesting um, sacred time uh, sacred land being viol uh, being violated by politicians and um, oil companies and that's a conversation that needs to be had but in regards to the romance it wasn't as fulfilling as these two um, I just wasn't as interested that's why I think I was the least interested in this plot um, I, I really can't say much about it because that is initially my first problem. I didn't really, the romance, because it is a romance novel. And I just, I don't know what to say about it. I It took me so long to rate this one. Like, I finished it a few days ago, and it's just been sitting on Goodreads without a rating because I didn't know what to rate it. And still, still sitting here, I don't know what to discuss about it, about what I didn't like. And also... I want to say that the way it ended was kind of jarring as well, but I don't know. I, I feel like I need to read the second book in order to um, justly say that because the to although the topics in this were important, um, we're talking about um, what I stated earlier about politicians selling sacred land and for profit when it was previously promised that it would remain untouched. but. It was, I don't know y'all, I just didn't like this one as much as these two, and it was just, didn't feel, felt disjointed, and I don't know, it just didn't, it didn't hit like the other two, but all three of these are series, and I want to, I'm saying that I want to read those just to see, because I enjoyed her writing, Miss Kennedy Ryan's writing. She's a very good writer and she's very good at writing conversations and uh, discussing these real, very real topics. But um, also these, I think these, these two, Longshot and Before I Let Go, they follow characters that we met in these, in these books and their lives. And I think this one, um, The Kingmaker, I think it should continue with Maxim and Lennox. But I, at the same time, I didn't really connect to those characters, the side characters in her books, to want to continue reading, but I enjoy her writing, and that's what's making me want to continue reading. If that makes sense, but I gave my ratings for each of her books, and I just, she's a beautiful writer, so I guess the, if my end goal for this book is to tell you to check out her writing. So that's the end of my 
Are They For Me series for Kennedy Ryan. If you've read any of her books, let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in reading any of her, any of her books, let me know also in the comments below. Um, but if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye!